Nairn, being a straightforward physical damage dealer without anything to really cause support, was likely the least interesting Season 3 character to be released in the Neo Vision era. For that matter, I kind of forgot when she was released. Oh, Nicole won. Nairn's Trustmaster reward is a materi that boosts attack, grants a guts buff that might not activate, and boosts attack when carrying a greatsword. Her Super Trustmaster reward is a two-handed greatsword with high attack. It also boasts a human and aquatic killer, and grants a nice MP regen. On to her active abilities. I will take on the enemy. Can't actually be used at the start of the fight. Regardless, it fills Nairn's uh, burst gauge and boosts its damage by 200%. The rest of Nairn's abilities chain with Stardust Ray, except for a Neo Brave ability. Flowering Sword Dance restores a bit of MP. Falling Petal Dance deals wooden damage, imbues wind onto Nairn, and increases her damage against aquatics or humans. If used after either evasive or defensive position, the ability increases the strength of the killer buffs. Lotus Wave Blade is mechanically the same, but imbues water. You probably won't use the owl style Guarding Blades, except for maybe Serenity, which has a dispel. Beautiful Bloom Blade lowers water and wind resistance, boosts Nairn's attack by 300%, and increases the damage modifiers of most of her old attacks. Ultimate Bloom Blade can't be used at the start of the battle. Regardless, it deals better damage, goes for the burst gauge, and increases its damage by 200%. Auspicious Breeze Blade deals wind damage that chains a Bulging Trike and lowers the enemy's wind resistance by 120%. Passives. But for Trust Master Reward or Super Trust Master Reward equipped, Nairn gains stats, strengthens the damage modifier for Lena Burst, and this last passive doesn't really matter in her Neo Vision form. In terms of passives, she hasn't really gained much, not even a chain Lena boost. Her normal attack has been changed to Sword of the Body Double, which raises her team's wind resistance by 80%. At EX plus 2, she gets Warring Spear. At EX plus 3, she gets 500 attack. Let's look at her Lena Burst. It enables Evasive Position Plus, which can cure some status ailments, attack breaks, and lets Nairn evade 6 attacks, or Defensive Position Plus, which boosts her defense by 300%, gives her resistance to attack breaks, and grants a 50% general mitigation buff. Time to change forms. Nairn's Brave Shift has a 4 turn duration and a 4 turn cooldown. On to her active abilities. I don't want anyone else to suffer can't be used at the start of the battle. It boosts Nairn's attack by 300%, and her wind damage by 30%. Verdant Breeze Blade deals wind damage that chains a Bouting Shrike and lowers wind resistance by 120%. Passes. But for Trust Master Reward or Super Trust Master Reward equipped, Nairn gains stats, and 1000 flat attack. She's also gained 4 strong killers, and a big booster in the burst damage. She prefers to carry a single weapon, meaning half the capture the chain limit boost. Her normal attack has been changed to deal wind damage and slightly fill her limit burst gauge. Let's look at her limit burst. Inflicts a 130% wind imperil, deals wind damage that gets stronger with another use, and boosts your team's elemental resistance by 90%. Let's rank brave abilities. Raising both just raises their damage modifiers, not their effects. Time to make a damage rotation. On turn 1, cast Beautiful Bloom Blade and double cast Auspicious Breeze Blade. On turn 2, triple cast Auspicious Breeze Blade. On turn 3, cast Falling Petal Blade, Full Bloom Blade, and Ultimate Bloom Blade. On turn 4, activate her Brave Shift, and use her Lea Burst. On turn 5, cast I Will Take on the Enemy, I Don't Want Anyone Else to Suffer, and Verdant Breeze Blade. On turn 6, use her Lea Burst. On turn 7, triple cast Verdant Breeze Blade. On turn 8, she switches back, so repeat the rotation from here. Add in another triple cast of Auspicious Breeze Blade to fit the 4 turn weight. So, EX2. An instant Lea Burst isn't particularly necessary for Nairn, unless you want to get those killer boss and don't have another way to bring them in. It's not especially helpful for her Brave Shift either, as while you can use it right off the bat, she can't use her cooldown abilities to properly support it as they're not available in the first turn. EX plus 3 is extra attack, which is nice, if you happen to have enough Nairns. So how good is Nairn? Well, outclassed is a good word. She's ultimately a wind damage dealer with very little to offer outside of damage in a well-developed team. It doesn't help that a lot of her potential is skated behind turns, as her cooldown abilities have the very cool feature of not being available at the start of the fight. Her Brave Shift is far more impressive than her base form, due to her base form's lack of development, but unfortunately her Brave Shift only lasts for 4 turns. To make matters worse, you can't return to it for another 4 turns, and the lackluster passes present in her base form aren't enough to serve as a form of consolation. Even if we were to compare her to the last Neo Vision Awakened Wind Damage Dealer, she still loses out due to the potential equipment benefits you can give to Sid. And then of course there's the Neo Vision unit Sid faces against, who either don't suffer from any limitations or are barely weighed down by them. And to make matters worse, she's not even free. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, leave a like and subscribe. Comment below how far you can take Nairn. I can't even reach EX plus 1.